Now streaming live. Okay. <clears throat> I, uh, everybody's here except for those uh, counselors that are not. That was pretty efficient, wasn't it? <laughs> it's Friday morning. What do you expect? Anyway, I'd uh, like to officially call this meeting to order at 9.07. Uh, I'd like to state this is an electronic meeting being held in accordance with Section 238 of the Municipal Act 2001 due to COVID-19 pandemic. Um, all members are present with the exception right now of Councillor Hayes and Councillor uh, Nishikawa, who hopefully will be able to join us shortly. We have uh, most of our senior team here, I believe. And um, also, so CAO clerk, everybody here, senior management here. I don't think there's anybody missing from that list. And um, we've asked for public comments through our website, TML public comment at Muskoka Lakes or the email address. We did not receive any. Uh, motions have been pre-populated, random movers and seconders, and voting will be done by showing of our hands. So with that, um, are there any disclosures of interest today? Don't see any. There is no verbal, or sorry, no supplementary agenda. Uh, we do have um, invited delegations, and uh, those are some friends from Strategy Corp who are guiding us through this. Uh, I'd like to welcome Chris Loretto. Caitlin McClung, as well as Lexi Enser to uh, our Zoom meeting today. Welcome. Uh, I'll turn it over to you in a moment, but I have one first motion to read. That is moved by Councillor Bridgman, seconded by Councillor Ed Edwards, be it resolved that pursuant to Section 232 of Township Procedural Bylaw 2019 the rules of procedure are suspended for the duration of Strategic Plan, plan Refresh August Workshop Series Session 1, and that they be reinstated at the conclusion of the said workshop. Any comments? All those in favor? Councillor, there we go. Councillor Bridgman's in. There we go. Thank you very much. That is carried. Okay. Um, Mr. CIO, do you want to uh, start with the introductions at this point, or where do you want to go from here? Uh, thanks for worshiping. Good morning, everybody. I believe the agenda has Mr. Loretto starting, sort of give us the context for the day, and then there's an opportunity for comment from uh, you and myself. Okay, I will uh, at that point. Uh, Chris, welcome, and I'm going to turn the floor over to yourself and uh, to take us through today. Welcome. Oh, great. Uh, thank you, Your Worship, and, and good morning, councillors. I hope everybody's doing uh, well today, and it's a Friday, and, uh, you know, uh, we have a, a little bit of work ahead of us, but then uh, we get to go into the weekend. So I'm looking forward very much to the discussion today. I thought about reaching out to the mayor for asking a for a mental health day, given the Leafs collapse last night, uh, but I decided against it, I'm hoping for the best this afternoon. Um, what we want to do here today is uh, restart the strategic planning uh, uh, process uh, that was uh, put on hold uh, at the commencement uh, of COVID and to uh, build on the workshop that we had uh, with you uh, back in uh, January uh, of this year and begin to break down some of the pieces that uh, we began to sketch out at that workshop, beginning today by reflecting on and trying to come to uh, a, a level of agreement on the vision, mission, uh, values uh, of, uh, uh, of the uh, organization and the township, and uh, that will form uh, one of the key foundational pillars for uh, the new strategic plan that uh, you will be uh, putting uh, together. And so that's what our focus is gonna be today. As you uh, are aware, you received a workbook in advance of uh, this, uh, this session. Uh, where we asked you to uh, reflect on the feedback that was provided at that first workshop and to um, uh, put down some of your thoughts on, uh, on the vision, mission, values, and how you would like to see those uh, updated and, uh, and, and where you'd like uh, to see those go. And so I will facilitate uh, the discussion uh, today. Um, given that we're in a virtual environment and we're not together like we were at the, at the January workshop, I will um, uh, work to make sure that we get everybody's input and so may just got, kind of go through um, through uh, with each councillor and asking them to uh, uh, contribute their thoughts and I will do my best to summarize and, and try to help us uh, get to uh, get to ground. Um, so uh, we'll uh, just uh, Lexi maybe in terms of uh, our, if you're able to share the screen maybe we can um, just uh, move to uh, 
slides four and five just really quickly and then I'll turn it over to, to Derek. I think um, what we're trying to do over the next series of sessions is go through each of the main components of the strategic plan kind of one by one and take a building block approach to ultimately getting to a draft uh, uh, strategic plan that can then be uh, used as the basis for engagement uh, with the broader community to get their input uh, and reflections on it. Um, so this is uh, just, uh, again, we're still very much in the early stages of the process. This isn't the, the, what we come out with over the next series of workshop is not the final plan, but it's a, it's a draft based on our best uh, collective work together. And then we use that uh, as the opportunity to get feedback from the community. And then once we have that feedback, we can reflect again and refine or change things that we uh, thought were good ideas uh, today, um, and uh, with the benefit of others' uh, input, uh, reflect on those and, and, and change or, or refine refine those. So, uh, in terms of um, the agenda today, we're going to start by uh, talking about the values that uh, make Muskoka Lakes the, the the great place that it is. Then we'll talk about the vision and the mission, and we're going to spend about forty minutes on the values, about fifty minutes on. Uh, the vision and mission, and then we'll wrap up and conclude and set the scene for the next uh, the next workshop. Um, uh, as it was outlined in the uh, uh, workbook, um, the uh, the input and the feedstock that comes out of today, we will quickly turn around and and provide a summary of what was agreed to today, and you'll have that uh, uh, in, in advance of the next workshop, uh, where we'll be talking about the strategic goals. Um, we'll have a chance to reflect uh, at the next workshop on what we came out with today and then proceed to go on to the next building block, which is the uh, strategic goals. Um, just what I wanted to do really quickly is um, now that we're kind of restarting the process is just uh, touch on slide four and five that were in your workbook really quickly about, you know, what is the strategic plan and how does it fit into the uh, to the overall context of uh, of the municipality. Um, and so, you know, the street strategic plan serves as the overarching uh, document that sets the direction that council wants to take the municipality in. And it is kind of the chapeau on top of all the other uh, official and master plans, the fiscal strategy, the departmental plans and budgets and the individual performance plans that are set out uh, within within the within the organization. And so what we're looking here is for council to set the the broad uh, the broad direction through the strategic plan and have that filter through into all the other areas uh, of the of the organization. And uh, it, 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 the, the strat plan is meant to inform where are we going and how will we get there? And then the other official plans, the master plans, the fiscal strategy, those other uh, departmental uh, work plans um, will set out the exactly uh, the, the, you know, the day-to-day the, the -day activities that will be put into place um, and some of the, the um, core, uh, core strategic elements that will be put into place to actually achieve uh, the strategic plan. The strategic plan is, uh, if done well, is one of the best communications tools you'll have to use uh, for yourselves in terms of, you know, helping you make decisions on the things that come to you, but also being able to artic articulate to the community and, and, and uh, you know, uh, future residents and, and, and you know, uh, potential investors about why Muskoka Lakes uh, is, the, is the right place for them to come and live or uh, invest uh, in, in building their uh, business. Um, I won't spend much time on the next slide, but, uh, but other than to say um, the strategic plan informs all the other work and plans that you put together through, uh, through the year. The strategic plan is not meant to be a static document so that you know, what we thought was a good thing in the fall of uh, 2020 um, doesn't mean it's necessarily going to hold. A strategic plan needs to be a living document uh, that uh, council uh, comes together uh, ideally on an annual basis to reflect on, look at the progress you're making, understand how the environment may have changed and how you may need to either pivot or adjust some of the directions you uh, set out in the original plan so that you keep the organization um, moving forward. Uh, but it is it is meant to uh, you know align everybody within the organization and help the community understand as to where council wants to go and what the, what the priorities uh, are going to be and how those priorities are going to be resourced. Uh, to get there. Um, so that's just a little bit of a strategic plan 101 refresher. Um, uh, we'll, we'll start um, with the uh, going into the uh, values 
uh, in just a, in just a moment. Um, but with that, I'll turn it back over to Derek and, and his worship uh, to add uh, any other comment that they want to uh, to add to set up today. Uh, thank you, Derek. Over to you. Thanks, Your Worship. But uh, I just had two things. Uh, mm -hmm. Firstly, I uh, just want to thank Chris and uh, his team for uh, rejigging the work plan to allow us to get here today. Uh, secondly, uh, look forward to the opportunity to uh, get things back on track, uh, to creating a document that will guide uh, council and staff actions for the balance of the term and uh, hopefully for the years to come. So thank you. Uh, thank you for that. And uh, before I go back to Chris, I also want to echo uh, CAO's comments uh, for Chris and your team to get us back here today. Also, I should recognize Derek in this as well, because, um, you know, dealing with pandemic, dealing with regular business and everything, trying to reopen and get uh, us going back. Uh, the good news about this is as we work our way through this, um, we will set the vision and where this township is going to go um, for the next four years anyway. But uh, hopefully it's a, a good solid base. Um, and as we do work our way through this, the only thing I just I remind people, and it's always we, we head in a direction. We talked about this yesterday in our official plan review. Uh, when we go out to the public, when we make statements and we put in place policies, there's implications. We need to understand the pros and the cons of that. So as we work our way through this and we move forward, there will always be implications. So uh, it's nice to understand both sides of that ledger as we move forward. Chris, over to you. Great. Alexi, if I can ask you to move to, to slide 10. Um, just uh, as I said, this is the first of four sessions that we're doing, and I do want to to, to remark that coming out of the workshop uh, in January, we did receive feedback from uh, councillors, uh, received feedback when I uh, uh, delegated uh, to uh, to council, I think it was in February, just on the draft uh, framework, so we have had the benefit of some of that, uh, that, that feedback. Um, and uh, so what we want to do over the next uh, four workshops, beginning with today, as I said, is to take everything kind of piece by piece uh, and build uh, each week uh, on what we did in the prior week, uh, beginning with the values, vision, and mission today. I believe on Tuesday, we have our second workshop where we'll build on the work we did today to talk through what we want the strategic goals for the organization uh, and for the township to be. Um, and then building on that in workshop three, we'll build out some of the initiatives we think that we'll need to undertake in order to achieve those uh, strategic goals. And then the fourth workshop will be about validating all the work that we had completed to date, and then thinking through how we're gonna, you know, what we would propose in terms of measuring our success against the goals that we've set uh, for ourselves, and uh, begin to think about some of the things that we need to put on operational work plans around some of the implementation considerations. At the end of these four workshops, as I said, we will have a draft a strategic plan that we can then take to the community and have them vet and provide their input. And then we'll uh, reconvene once that uh, consultation process is over, uh, give you the benefit of that feedback so that we can take a fresh look at what we've come up with over these four workshops and refine it and, uh, uh, and uh, hopefully set a, a course. Um, before your worship, before I get into the values, I'm just wondering if there are any uh, questions on process um, or the purpose of the strategy and its relationship to the other uh, key documents and, and processes of the municipality that we might answer before we jump into it. Okay, um, I'm just kind of scrolling through right now. I don't see anyone's hand up and uh, I'm, I'm suggesting blue hand. I can only see a portion of the screen. So um, I think Chris, you're good to go. Okay. So Lexi, why don't we uh, move to um, slide um, uh, 21 then? And uh, I'll just briefly refresh everybody uh, and for the, for the viewers at home where we landed in the first workshop, uh, just in terms of uh, six core values that um, uh, came, out, came out there. Um, the, the, the first was excellence, um, that the township pursues excellence in a variety of ways in service delivery and responsible governance and excellence in environmental stewardship. The second uh, value was uh, sustainability, that we value sustainability both through our environmental stewardship and, and in our activities to develop uh, uh, the town in a responsible and sustainable way. The third was transparency, that the township is committed to keeping its activities uh, transparent and open to the public. The fourth was courage. Uh, the township uh, uh, is a leader and will continue to be a leader in environmental stewardship 
uh, meaning having the courage to pursue new avenues and make difficult decisions that will enhance the township's future. Uh, resiliency was another value that came out of that workshop and that the township is resilient, both in terms of its natural environment and its cultural history. And then lastly, uh, but certainly not least, is engagement that we have a close relationship with our residents and members of the community. As a result, we rely on our community to guide us by providing their ongoing uh, perspectives. So uh, the homework uh, that we asked councillors uh, to, to do, and uh, it, we're in COVID and we got clearance from the Ministry of Education to say that nobody can, can, can fail. So, uh, the, so even if you didn't do your homework, that's okay. Um, but uh, what we want to do is reflect on those. And we asked each of you to identify three to six values and, and statements associated with those values. So really telling us what is meant by, uh, by the words uh, that you identify that are unique to the township. And it's fine to say, we love all six of these, let's, uh, let's, let's, let's move on. But uh, perhaps the, the best way to do this is if, if we go through and kind of get uh, each counselor's perspective on where they kind of what they're thinking is on the values that we came up with and what they think they would like to see changed or what they would like to see added. Um, and so uh, your worship, it's, if it's okay, I'm just going to go through a kind of beginning with uh, counselors from Ward C and working, uh, working our way across. Um, so uh, Councillor Kelly, um, uh, I, you know, there, there's unfortunately no reward uh, for being first, but uh, if you don't mind, uh, I'd like to ask First, to kind of share uh, share with us your thoughts on the proposed value statements and any uh, amendments or changes you'd like to make. Well, thank you for calling on me first. Um, I knew you'd be prepared, Councillor. So no, I am. I'm ready, and I'm sitting here. At, here's my thought. I, I I think the value statements that are presented, the six here, are fine. But to be honest with you, what what I think is there's an overarching value here that I'm not sure is completely captured in those six, and that is what I would call sustainability. I think a lot of people, um, both who work here, who, who uh, vacation here, who have second homes here, uh, look for some permanence, some degree of uh, sustainability in the environment, sustainability in the sense of tradition and culture, uh, sustainability in uh, even in the sort of economic uh, opportunity, the economic uh, uh, I'll call it consistency that comes with, with having a relationship with the township of Muskoka Lakes. Nobody wants to come here and have the roots for which they are here ripped out from under them. Okay. Um, and, and I'm not sure that that's captured, but I think that's a, a highly valued uh, passion that people have for, um, for the township, regardless of why they are here or why they have a relationship with it. That, that's great. Uh, thank you, Councillor. Is there anything else you uh, want to contribute before I go on to uh, Councillor no, Bridgman? No, I'm good, thanks. Go ahead. Okay. Uh, Councillor Bridgman. Councillor, you're on mute. Yeah, every time uh, somebody's on mute, I have to take a sip of my coffee. Yeah. Well, Okay, well, I'm going to be fast so I can go off my video again. Um, <laughs> I had written down sustainability also. Okay. And uh, what Kelly has said is exactly what I was thinking. So I hope you're frozen on my end. I hope that got through. The rest of it, I was very happy with. Okay, great. Thank you, Councillor. Uh, uh, Councillor uh, Jaglowitz with us, uh, Your Worship? Yeah. I believe he is, yep. I think all the councillors are here now. Okay, um, thank you. Uh, thank you. Can you hear me? Yes. I'm actually going to approach this a little differently because I went through a couple of days ago, I went through my notes from the last, the first two meetings we had, and, and, and my notes indicate that we'd already passed this step, moved into a vision statement, and into a mission statement. And so I have no issue with the values that are listed there, but I'd just like to uh, state the, the uh, those two statements that I came up with, and they may because I think you can put them backwards into the values. So I think the vision, my vision is that Township Muskoka Lakes will protect and enhance its unique character, natural and cultural environment, and pass it on to future generations. And the mission statement would be the Township of Muskoka Lakes Council, residents and staff will be stewards of the environment 
set clear expectations of each other and work together to build a sustainable and thriving community. So once again, those are values. I also have a number of goals that I had already laid out, but I think this is a, in, isn't appropriate because that's for the next session. Would that be correct? Yes, it is. So yeah. those are kind of my comments. I, I found your homework difficult because I thought we'd already completed that, that section of our homework in the last two sessions. Uh, thank, thank you, Councillor. It, uh, it, it sounds like you're ahead of the class and getting frustrated with how fast the teacher is moving here. But uh, what we want to do is just uh, revalidate some of these things in, in case uh, in, in light of COVID and in, in, in the passage of time, uh, folks have had uh, some change of heart or uh, new things have kind of sprung to mind. But thank you for that. Um, Councillor Roberts. Thank you. Yes, um, I too had uh, thought we had uh, come to rest with these, but I re read down, when I re re read them, I support them all. Um, I'm thinking that um, the proof is in the pudding. We have all these great uh, six points or seven points, but uh, the next couple of steps that we take will really define whether we're serious about implementing things that we can, strategic plans that we can do this. So. That's what all I have. I just, just excited to get moving on to the other portions of this exercise. Okay, great. Cal Counselor, can I just ask one follow up on that? Um, do you feel that these um, these uh, values are genuine to uh, Muskoka Lakes? Meaning, oh I, yes, they're genuine to Muskoka Lakes, and um, they're, they're also genuine to to. Um, um, many other regions, but they're just words on paper. Yep. Uh, you know, we all get, go around and say, oh boy, we're really great. We have all these values, but the, but our actions will define whether we really are going to be able to do anything. And that's fair. And one of the things I like to push uh, our clients to do is to really, are these genuine to you? Um, I mean, it's, it's not to say other places can't have uh, similar values because we, we do, you know, across this province share a similar value set. But I want to make sure they're genuine, both in terms of either this is the way these are the values the place operates under now and or these are the values we believe we need to be operating under in the, in the future. Yeah. I just so just and finally when I'm talking this and I have a, my contact with KPMG um, caught me based with a vision statement and with this is so what. You read each one of these and say so what. Yep. And you got to find the so what. So I'm looking forward to that. Okay. And so what will prove itself in the other elements of the plan. Absolutely. Um, and, and in the culture of the place as well. Um, Councillor uh, Mazin. Uh, thank you. I'm glad I didn't have to go first. But honestly, the, the six do capture. I had, um, I, I was uh, looking at the word courage. And wondering, I, I probably would have flipped it to say leadership um, and as a, be courageous in our leadership. Um, uh, yeah, and the customer service, the, the word engagement, I think I was getting caught on that. I think you're, you're capturing a lot of what we talked about, but I wasn't sure about the word engagement. Okay. That's a nuance, but... Um, I'm not sure if there, I, I didn't have a replacement for it. It was more, I, I think, if I recollect the conversations that we did have, um, there was a real focus on the need to uh, have really, really best in class customer service and be able to fully engage with the community. So I think you probably have captured that between these two words, excellence and engagement. But the two words out of this that I, I had been getting stuck upon were courage and uh, as I said, I, I might have just flipped it, but it's not really, it still captures it. And then the word engagement. So, okay. so, so can I just ask a follow up? Uh, yeah, go on. So, when so, you say cur courageous in our leadership, what does that mean to you? What, what, is, what, is the, what is the value at the heart of that? That you're not afraid to make tough decisions or you're not afraid to be, be, your own path what, what what does that mean well i think it's inherent in being a leader 
is sometimes you do have to make a tough call, right? And, and right now in the world, we're seeing that uh, daily. And so I think I might've just personally flipped it, but that's not to say it's correct. I, I think it's reflective of the discussions that we did have. Um, I, I just have uh, also recalled a lot of times we talked about the importance of a word. Um, and then I, my final thought is just regarding sustainability. Uh, I think that th that is the core one in ways because uh, you just have to look to what's happening today. And th there needs to be comfort in knowing that no matter what goes on in the world, whether it's the flood of a century or a pandemic or uh, whatever else, there's a stability and a sustainability to this place. So yeah. thank you. That's great. Thank you, Councillor. Uh, Councillor Edwards. Thank you very much. Well, um, I think that the, the, the six are fine. Um, I, I also think that uh, you don't need courage there. I think uh, and that protect the environment rather than the courage. Uh, we all have to have the courage. But transparency is, is one of the, the big things. Let the people know that we are working for them. And that's what I've been doing for eight years and that. So um, I don't have too much more to, to, to say, really. Uh, yes, we have to have uh, uh, sustainability, but uh, we also have to protect the environment because if we don't protect the environment, we won't have, have um, the scope. Thank you. Okay, great. Thank you. Um, Councillor uh, Zaretz. I think that was Councillor Zavitz. Gwen? Sorry, Zavitz. Sorry, I can't read my own handwriting. I apologize for that, Councillor. Well, thank you. Uh, I'm never used to being in the middle. I'm always last with the name like Zavitz. So there you go. Listen, um, I uh, subscribe to the, uh, you know, and I, I want to talk about uh, Councillor uh, Roberts. I mean, I agree with, with uh, Councillor Roberts in that these are just words. And uh, I think it's what we do with them and, 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 and these sessions as we move forward. Um, I certainly, as a counselor, I, I do believe it's an experiential piece for me as I'm, as, as I'm going through our term. Uh, you know, we spoke back in the, in the winter. And uh, quite honestly, now that we're here and it's COVID and, and there's the compression of all the people that are up here in Muskoka, uh, we're getting a lot of phone calls, we're getting a lot of engagement. Uh, you know, the taxpayer base is who we work for. And I, I do think there's a different intensity to um, what I've seen and what I said to you in our session all those months ago, which I know you've documented and, it, and the result is what we're seeing here as a review. Um, you know, I, I think the words are things like uh, enforce, uh, you know, uh, engage and act and enforce people, pieces of this puzzle. Uh, I think that the people that are on the, the lay person that would see these words that we're looking at here would say, really, what, is, what is that? What, you know, there needs to be the measurement piece. Yeah. Uh, so I'm going to support, you know, all of the, the group here with the words that we select. What I will be a little bit harder line on is that measurement piece. Yeah. Uh, you know, I guess that's, an, I know that's another day, but uh, I certainly subscribe to everything that I'm seeing here. These are great. Uh, they're, they're well positioned, they make sense. It's what um, the direction we should be going in, but I, I do not want to lose sight of uh, who this is for. And it's the townships, tax paying residents who will be the ultimate benefactors of this hard work we're doing. So I hope that it answers the question. Yeah, just to follow up on, on that uh, counselor and, and, and you know, um, and I'm not saying you're doing this, but I, I know some people who can say, oh, values, you know, and I never used to be a fan of values until, you, you know, um, until more recently, because, you know, if, if they're genuine to you and, you know, you use them, you know, you may not I I explicitly in your head, you know, go through all six, but if, if we can say at the end of the day, you know what, when I'm making decisions around the council table, I'm guided by these values. Or when I uh, when I'm talking to my residents, they're guided by these values. I think you've hit the mark. Can you say that you, as a counselor, and you know your engagement with your constituents, say that yeah, you know, at the end of the day, we do value these things, and these values uh, direct how we make decisions and how we work together. 
No, absolutely, and a, a great point. I mean, to understand a problem, and, and, and we're identifying problems here as we move through, uh, you know, understanding first uh, and managing expectations second, understanding what those expectations even are. So, I mean, this is a great uh, body of work here in terms of seeking agreement, you know, that, that we all agree that off we go. Uh, I, I do appreciate values and I ex exercise them in my own life, of course. So I think it's a, a, you know, a valid exercise and I support you know, what I see. I just think that I'm, I'm gonna be bringing a um, more of a street, more of a you know, experiential piece to it. I use that word again, uh, yeah. you know, intensity, if you will. Excellent. So I'm going to be calling on you first in the fourth workshop when we're actually talking about measurement of uh, the goals we set for each other. Please do. Thank you. Let, let that be noted. Let that be noted. Uh, thank you, Councillor. Uh, Councillor Hayes. Okay, thank you. Um, I guess I'm looking for three words. I'm looking for compromise. I'm looking for balance. And most importantly, I'm looking for respect. Um, resiliency is wonderful, but that just reminds me to bounce back. I think respect is I think respect could replace resiliency um, almost in the same definition, but I don't want to get caught up on words. I do want to progress through this, and so I am happy to go with whatever the group decides. Thank you. Okay, so uh, I don't want anybody to feel like they have to they have to compromise. So compromise is good, and I, I hear you as a value. But can I, so when you say respect, counselor. Um, you, and the definition of resiliency is the township of Muskoka Lakes is resilient both in our natural environment and in our cultural history. Uh, help me understand um, how you view what is meant by respect, because you, you said you could almost swap out the words there. W what does respect really mean to you? Respect means that you make decisions based on um, our cultural history and our environment that will be um, uh, I'm looking for the word uh, pays homage to our what our history was who we who we were where we came from and environment has always been um, something that we have gone forward and tried to develop it in a way that is both good for the economy and good for the environment. So by respecting those things, um, we are giving them value, I think. Okay, great, thank you very much. Uh, Councillor uh, Nishikawa. Thank you. I, um, I struggle with doing a strategic plan and, and um, I just tend to try to look at what we provide for our taxpayers. Yep. So I'm looking at, um, again, uh, others have said lots of pretty pictures on a page and I've looked at lots of pretty pictures for years. But honestly, um, we don't do a very good job of following the pretty pictures on, or pretty words on paper. Um, and if I only just think about the simple needs of the majority of our uh, rate payers, they're asking for good roads, they're asking for their garbage to be picked up and police services. We fail pretty bad in this area, in my opinion. So I'm having a really hard time figuring out where all of this fits into values and everything else because we can all say that we're it's a unique Muskoka. well it's not so unique there's a, another whole bunch of this right up to Thunder Bay sort of thing so other or you know other municipalities are dealing with the same issues that we have in many ways um, we don't have courage for instance, if we cared for the environment, we wouldn't be allowing fireworks to go off every single night of the week. Um, we would remember that we actually have wildlife and all of those other things that we should be trying to 
protect. Um, think that's why people come to the area as well. So I, I'm not quite sure where I'm going to fit into the conversation here, but I'll just sit back and, and listen. Okay. So, um, so um, I, I just want to, to explore. So we don't do a good, it, do, so is, is your view that yes, the, these values make sense and, and, and you know, I, I, I think we aspire to this, but we're these values, but we're falling short of these values in our actions. Is that, is that a fair characterization of, of, uh, of some of your concern around this? Yes. Okay. Okay. So you want to see a greater fulfillment of the aspiration. Okay. I'm sorry. I didn't hear you. You, you want to see a great, uh, you, know, you want to see a greater commitment to the fulfillment of the aspiration. Yes. Um, I, I see Councillor Zavitz has his hand up. Uh, Councillor, is it okay if I uh, just get the mayor in for his turn uh, His turn before we uh, open it up to, okay. Uh, your worship, uh, last but certainly not least, um, your perspective. Um, thank you. And I appreciate actually Councillor Hayes, she stole many of the words that I would use. Um, uh, the first word is that of respect. Um, and uh, it's been stated, but we need to respect all aspects you know, and, and what I like about our values and our mission in particular, when we have to make decisions, we need to hold them up to a principle and the value of respect. So I need to respect when I'm making a decision on a, a variance, both sides of the equation, which comes to my next word, balance, and truly understanding that. Um, what I like is we're putting a greater emphasis right now on our environment and incorporating that into our values because that hasn't been there before. And we may have talked about it, we haven't put it in writing, we haven't been able to have that roadmap to say when we're going to make the decision, um, where do we go? So the only other words that I kind of, that are somewhat missing in this is that a, a history or tradition, and I know you pick up history um, in the cultural history and resilience, but we are steeped in history and steeped in tra tradition um, and, and steeped in multi-generations, which is history and tradition for me. And I don't want to ever want to lose that. We have a unique defining character here in Muskoka Lakes and more so than any other region, which is why we have been successful and want to be able to maintain where we are growing in a more environmentally sustainable um, direction, so. Great, thanks, Your Worship. Uh, Councillor, so Your Worship, actually, just a, a quick question. Are there, do you want to see respect uh, and balance in history and tradition be the, the keywords describing the values, or do you wish to see them kind of infused in some of the value statements? Um, for me, everything we have to do, I believe, needs to be done with respect. Um, and you can add you can add respect to excellence, respect to uh, sustainability, transparency, um, <clears throat> but it, it is a underlying core value mm -hmm. that this council, this township, everybody needs. And you know when we have property owners in dispute with one another, oftentimes they don't respect the other side. And I want to make sure that everybody does respect the other side. Just because you don't want to have a hot tub in the woods, somebody else might. Okay, thank you. Um, and so I can't see everybody on my screen. Uh, was it uh, Councillor Zavitz who had had his hand up? Councillor? Please, yes I do. Thank you and I, if I may, I just would like to reinforce uh, some of what uh, Councillor Nishikawa has commented on. And I think the words may well be acknowledgement and recognition. I think we need to realize, and I'm, I'm not so sure we've ever had a fulsome discussion around um, how our township goes rural to urban for six months every year. Um, I mean, that's a complete reversal of, uh, I can sit in the same chair in November and I can't see a person. Right now I can see 700 people, boats, uh, things. So, so my point is um, that kind of weight, that, that kind of, I think what, what Ruth 
Nishikawa is saying, I completely agree with, and it meshes in with the mayor. The word is ultimately respect. I use it every day when I'm talking to my constituents here who are complaining about noise and, and fireworks and uh, no policing and no enforcement, and people you know banging against each other, as the, the mayor has commented. Um, it is really respect, but when we go from uh, you know low speed to high speed, I'm not so sure we as a township are, are actually acknowledge that. Are we prepared for that? I mean, we need to be, and and that's uh, I'm I'm not sure what that what that actual word is, but I think that acknowledgement goes a long way to understanding what what the pressures are here seasonally because it still is a seasonal place. Thank you. Thank you. Um, okay, so in looking at this, I think there's there's general agreement on the values, but I do um, I do want to pick up. There's some threads, and and there seems to be some overlap. So we've heard respect from uh, three of your colleagues, um, and when um, Councillor uh, Kelly provided uh, his definition of sustainability, um, talking about you know the environment the traditions and culture of the of the community economic uh, you know economic uh, opportunity um, and the relationship with uh, with residents i'm wondering if we if if you would be comfortable as a group if we did craft a value which is respect and what i seem to be hearing from everybody is that you know at the end of the day respect is respect is big both in terms of our respect for uh, our residents in terms of the services and the quality of those services we provide, our respect for our natural environment, our respect for our tradition and the culture, um, and uh, our, our respect for um, uh, creating economic uh, opportunity. Would anybody be, be opposed to us taking that feedback away and crafting a value around respect that kind of basically integrates those kind of four or five things that is consistent, I think, in most everybody's comments. It, it's Peter Kelly. Can I just, uh, I, I'm not sure how to get your attention. I had the hand up, but I just wanted to, to put two thoughts on the table and then go back on mute. Yeah. Um, I, I was really uh, pleased to hear Councillor Nishikawa and uh, Danelle, the Councillor Hayes uh, input because it sparked an issue that I had the first time we met on this issue back in January. And, and you know, I, I want this document to be more than just the bottom shelf thing uh, that, you know, we, we run around and triumph and, and say, look what we managed to do. And six weeks later, nobody remembers where they left the, the copy. Um, but I also am concerned that we keep talking about we and we, what, are our, what do we think are the values? Are, are we comfortable with this value? And, you know, my concern is that the way we operate, uh, both by statute and in reality, there is no we here. Uh, I, I'm not sure there's consistency. I'm not sure there's, there's necessarily a team. I mean, we have to all vote our conscience. We all come to this for different reasons, with different experience. I hope, uh, I know I do, I hope we all have our own individual set of values that have brought us to this table and forced us to step up and take whatever risk we took to get elected. And I hope we're true to those values. But at the end of the day, um, I'm increasingly convinced that like everything else that we do, the, this will become a compromise. This is never going to be six bullets that all of us get inspired to tears over. This is going to be, yeah, I can live with that. Uh, that's good. I'm really important. It's really important to me that A and C are in. The rest, eh, I'm not embarrassed by them. And so my, my issue in terms of trying to find, you know, whether we're all, you know, right in here across the boards, I, I don't think we ever could be. Uh, and, and that's been my concern with this exercise in January and, and, and even right now. I, I want this thing to be relevant, useful. I want this thing to uh, be a bit of a, not a roadmap so much as a, uh, an inspiration to keep us focused on the right things. Um, but at the end of the day, I also know that every time we pick a winner, we identify a loser. And, uh, uh, and, and that's gonna happen in, in terms of selecting six, seven, 10, 15, or two um, uh, core values. Uh, you know, it's, it's unlike anything I've done before in the corporate world where there is real 
you know, there's one figurehead who kind of takes control and creates the environment and motivates and challenges. This is, this is 10 independent contractors, quite honestly. That's my point. No, it, I'll go on. And Councillor, it's it, it's it's a fair comment, and let let me just say, you know, so these are values. So what I would say is, th this is a, a set of values that reflects how we as a community, uh, how we as a community, and as a council, and as an administration, um, uh, what guides what guides how we operate. It's fair to say, though, that we're not asking anybody to put a weighting against each of these values. Uh, for some. Uh, for some people, and I'm sure if we went through all members of council, you would have a, a different prioritization of some of these values. But at the end of the day, if we ever get stuck, um, and you know we're, we're trying to go back to the kind of you know okay, so what you know what is it that is supposed to guide our ability to get to some sort of consensus or compromise? Um, if 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 we all kind of go back and and to these values, and we use these values to try to achieve. Uh, that uh, that uh, compromise because it's very different than the corporate world, right? I mean, you know, it, the, the key uh, in building a successful community is about um, you know arriving at political consensus or certainly political compromise. So we're not saying that it's it's these it's these values uh, and only these values, or that you know, for some of you, you know, some of these values will resonate more and, and be more kind of in the forefront than others, or that you aren't bringing other uh, values. Uh, to the table, but what we're saying is these reflect our community. This, these reflect either the way we do operate or the way we wish to operate. Um, uh, that's that's what we're that's what we're looking to 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 get to. And Chris, do you mind if I just uh, <clears throat> just jump in there? I uh, just wanted to let you know because I'm not sure that you can see everyone. We've got um, Councillor uh, Nikishawa and Councillor Jagowitz and. Uh, Derek and Councillor Mazan all have their hands up. Okay, great. Uh, so Councillor Kelly, I think you were trying to get in there and then I'll go through. Yes, uh, apologies. Yep. No, Sorry. I'm good. We, you're moving on to somebody else, right? No, no, I think it, we're good. No, I mean, I just wanted to get follow up, point. Councillor. I just want to hear the follow up and then I'll go to Councillor. No, uh, I, I, just, just one quick last thought. The headlines, oh, not the headlines, but no, the headlines, the headers. On these uh, on these values that we are uh, looking at here, 16 are like the headlines in a newspaper story. They don't always match the content. So maybe part of the problem is there's kind of a misalignment between the single word courage and what we're actually trying to express underneath. That's all. Yeah, that that's fair. That's fair, and we we can take a look at that, Councillor uh, Nishikawa. I just was um, wondering. We keep talking about um, values and and basically respect. And I wonder where our council sees racism fitting into any of these comments. Because um, we live in a very tough community. Um, and I'll leave it at that. Thank you. Uh, Councillor Jagowitz. Uh, thank you. Um, I just want to comment on a couple things that have come out, and uh, the two are balance and compromise. I don't see these as values. I see them as things we do when we apply the values. And let me talk about balance for, for a minute, because I'm concerned about it. Balance implies that we need to balance economic success and environmental protection. It also implies winners and losers and trade-offs. Uh, and things like, if we look out for the environment, then growth will be sacrificed. And it's, it's well known that Muskoka's economic success is, is uh, linked to, to its health of its lakes and its natural characteristics. So I think we need to s specify specific values. And I think balance and compromise shouldn't be part of the statement. It's just the techniques we use when we apply them. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor. Um, uh, Mr. CAO, Derek. Thank you. Uh, the one thing that I've heard through my conversations with members of Council um, is they are accountable to their constituents. And uh, the same thing in terms of staff. Uh, my expectation is that staff are accountable uh, to uh, to our leaders uh, and, and 
correspondingly, uh, our leaders are are accountable to uh, members or, or council. And so I, I would suggest that uh, um, if council indulges to include accountability, I think it's uh, ext extremely important. Thanks, Derek. Uh, Councillor Mason. I just wanted to add by um, my support for the, the focus on respect and kind of kicking myself that I hadn't added that in myself. So it is a word that is used daily yeah. in almost any conversation I have. So whether it, thank you. Thank you. Um, okay, so uh, your worship, here's what I'm, I'm going to suggest. I'm gonna suggest that as part of our takeaway um, today and turn around for the next session is that we will craft language around a value for respect. Um, and I, I take everybody else's uh, uh, comments. I, I'm going to also just put on the floor um, uh, two other things. One is to, to build on um, uh, Councillor Mason's uh, comments around the courage. Um, would anybody object if we actually change that value to courageous leadership? Um, and, and, and so I'll, I'll ask that question. Um, and then secondly, how does uh, council wish to um, um, address the, um, rec uh, the, the idea raised by uh, Derek around uh, accountability? So can I, can I ask your, your worship the first question? Would anybody have an issue if we modified the courage value to be courageous leadership? I'm, I'm going to chime in if I may, Chris. I just yeah. do you need the word courageous leadership or is it just leadership? Um, I, I would suggest in this day and age you do. Okay. Because I, I think I, I think what some people interpret or what some people view as leadership isn't leadership. And I think what you're what I what I get from the conversation everybody has is that you know regardless of where you fall in terms of in terms of you know. Uh, issues, you do all seem to be committed to actually making uh, courageous decisions. And if that means you, you're, you're, you're blazing a trail that hasn't been blazed yet, you're going to be comfortable with that. That's the sense I get out of, uh, out of uh, hearing folks. And that's why I would think it, it, it probably uh, is probably more reflective of the, 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 how you value leadership and what you expect of leadership than just the plain descriptive word leadership, if that makes sense. Yep, that's good. Thank you. Okay. Uh, other comments or concerns about that? And Lexi, please feel free. I, I don't see all the hands. Councilor Edwards is, uh, I, I can help you out with this, Chris. Okay. Councilor Edwards first. Thank you very much. I would take courageous right out of there. You know, we've been almost an hour just playing with words and that, and, and this is what, what I, I, I find is it, with these things, you come up with all these fancy words as uh, Councillor Kelly said, it'll sit on a shelf somewhere. It's respect for, for people, listening to what they say. You may not always agree, but at least you treat them respectfully and that, and you don't all need all of this. I, I'm sorry, but uh, I think it's just a waste of time a lot of this here. Uh, we know what we should be doing. We just try and teach, uh, treat people like we'd like to be treated. So, you know, uh, like I would take courage right out of there. And that is just even solid uh, leadership, whatever you want. But uh, it's, it's not as if we're in a war or anything else like that. And that the, 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 the courage it takes. Yeah, you, you listen to this stuff, but I don't want people to get a false uh, impression that uh, we're all like, you know, uh, war heroes on something like this. So I would take it right out. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Other Other questions? Questions? Yes, I think you can move on. Okay. Um, and then on the uh, point around accountability, um, uh, ha ha your worship through you, how do, how do others feel about uh, adding that? Um, so we can either add it as a value or, you know, we can infuse it in the, mm -hmm. You know, one of the one of the states. I think uh, I have my hand up on that. If you're interested, sure, please go ahead. 
Okay, I, I think that you've got two values here, transparency and engagement. And I think you could almost incorporate them together. Accountability fits into one of those two yeah. or, or they could be combined because transparency is we keep activities transparent and open to the public, but we should also be accountable. Engagement is we engage, but we should also be accountable. So I think you, I don't think you have to create a new one, but you might want to work with. Yeah, I, I think I think uh, my two cents on that. I think that's right, Councillor. They're almost uh, two sides to the same coin. Um, Your Worship, are there others who wish to speak on this one? I don't see anybody else's hand up right now. So if we're, we're okay, we'll integrate it with the transparency value then for uh, the councillor's uh, 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 comments. Yep. Okay, good. So uh, Councillor Edwards, I, I do take your point and, and I know some people get frustrated with this, but um, you know, it's, it's not always clear what the values of the place are or what, the, what, the, what you aspire for the, the, the values um, to be. And the, the other thing too is whether or not these are lived or not is really, you know, it, it's in your hands, uh, whether or not the, the, the plans on the shelf or is actually on your desks every time you meet as a, as a council is really in, in your hands. And so, um, you know, the, 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 the document needs life breathed into it through council and, and through senior administrative leadership. And, and, and uh, so it really is in your hands to uh, to to uh, make the most of this, or you know, um, or have it sit sit on a shelf. So I, I think that's an important perspective because I don't I don't think uh, I don't want people to feel like this is a hopeless or a process or we're powerless uh, in 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 actually moving the, the the needle on these things because it, at the end of the day, uh, people implement strategy and it, it's in your hands to do that. Um, so what what I'll uh, what I'd like to do, uh, Your Worship, then is is, is to bring uh, this uh, piece to a close. We will craft a value on respect. We will integrate accountability into the transparency uh, value, and I think um, we will uh, modify leadership to be courageous leadership. Um, and we'll have a chance to you know finalize this at our next session when we bring back the write up. But um, I, I think we've made some pretty good progress here, and I think we can draw this part to a close if if, if that's okay. I agree. Continue on. Okay. So the next piece, Lexi, if we can go uh, to slide twenty three, is uh, around uh, around the vision. And so um, you know your homework was to uh, you know uh, either look at this vision statement and say, yeah, that meets the mark or uh, come up with a vision statement that uh, of your own. Um, and so um, the, the vision statement that came out of our work in, uh, in January and February was the township of Muskoka Lakes will maintain its iconic nature by balancing environmental stewardship and economic growth. And there was a, a discussion amongst council and, and uh, about okay, what's the relationship of this vision statement with the vision statements that uh, we have drafted for the purposes of the, of the official plan? And so on the bottom part of this slide are the, per, are, are the vision statements that are on the table for the official plan process. And what, what I would say is, is this, is that you, know, you don't want dueling visions, but you know, going back to that uh, triangle diagram earlier uh, that I went through, the strategy sits on top of everything else. And so what we're looking to achieve here is the, 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 the vision for the community in its entirety and all the, and, and, and all the facets of its existence. Not, so and the official plan deals with how we plan to uh, um, develop, uh, develop our lands and physically, physically grow or, uh, or manage ourselves. And the vision statement for the entirety of the municipality needs to not only inform the vision uh, for the official plan, but it also needs to set uh, it also needs to set the the vision for other things, including how we're actually going to or or, or, or how we deliver services and what types of services we deliver and 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 how we go about doing that. So what I want us to do is to uh, come to an agreement on a vision for the uh, for the entirety of the municipality that can be used as guidance uh, for 
um, not only the official plan, but the other master plans that we have in development, but and also be used as guidance for the uh, fiscal and uh, work plans that um, that the municipality is responsible for. And so what I'm going to do here is uh, I'm going to go in reverse order, starting with his worship and to get your perspective on the draft vision that came out of the January 2020 um, and, and uh, get, get your perspective on how you might want to see that changed or what you see as uh, the, the vision for, uh, for the municipality. So your worship, can I start with you? Yep. Absolutely, thank you. I, um, it's funny, listening to Councillor Jagowitz about balancing is sort of a, a result as opposed to a, a value perspective. Uh, the only potential change you could make, um, and, and I love iconic nature, I love the words environmental stewardship, and I like economic growth because that's truly a vision where we want to go. But I would potentially replace the word by balancing with the word including, and that would be the Township of Skoka Lakes will maintain its iconic nature, including environmental stewardship and economic growth. So that would be my only sort of tweak and if then we're not balancing, it respects the fact that we have an iconic nature in the environment and economic growth. Great, thank you, your worship. Um, Councillor uh, Nishikawa. I don't choose to add anything at this time. Is um, and may I ask, Councillor, is that because you're in violent agreement with the statement, or you're in violent opposition to the statement? I feel it's selling us short. In what respect? I I think that um, we're just talking about pretty trees again. That's all. Okay. And so what would you want to see reflected? I, I don't have anything to add at this time. Okay. okay. Uh, Councillor Hayes. Um, if you bring it down to its lowest form, um, the iconic nature is your home. The environment, uh, economic growth is your jobs, but there's nothing said about the people. So I would, um, Add to that growth uh, while respecting the wishes of the constituents. Yeah, no, it, it, that's a that's a really good observation, uh, Councillor Hayes. In terms of you're right, uh, we, we're kind of silent on people, um, so that that that's very helpful. Um, and uh, if others want to build on that idea as we go through, that would be that would be much appreciated as well. Uh, so thank you, Councillor Hayes. Uh, Councillor uh, Zavitz. Well, I'm always for the human element, so I would certainly concur with uh, Councillor Hayes that you know it, it is who is it for. It's yeah. for the taxpaying, the constituents. Um, I must say, uh, if I look at the, the draft vision statements uh, for the OP, if I look at number two, uh, I can tell you what we where we aren't, and, and we certainly aren't there. Uh, you know, being a leader, I can't even you know. It's an interesting. It's an inter It's a dichotomy, isn't it? I mean, this, this place is iconic. Uh, but we're all sitting back looking. It's, it's iconic because of what I'm looking at right now. It's trees and water. I mean, and, and people come here because it's uh, beautiful weather and isn't it a great place to be? So, you know, we can't we can't lose that sight. I mean, it, it, I guess if the word environment wraps it all up, but I don't think it does. So uh, I, I don't think that there's any reason why there's, this couldn't be embellished as a vision statement. Um, uh, not for the sake of just adding words, but for to add a, a dose of realism to it. Protection piece, right? I mean, we here we have something, and if we're not careful, we won't have it. That's, you know, so that's our job to be stewards. Yeah, okay. So you want to see, uh, Councillor, then um, protecting the iconic nature of the Absolutely. place. Uh, uh, yeah, because the word maintain is uh, almost mundane. I mean, uh, that's hard to do. Wow. That's becoming harder to do in 2020 than I think ever with yeah. the amount of people that are here, the environmental, you know, we, we the mayor has talked about economic, uh, you know, sus not sustainability, economic growth. And I, 
I, that's a whole other discussion. I mean, what does economic growth even mean? Do we want 20 welding shops in Bala? I mean, what, you know, so I think we need to spend some time talking about that as we move through. Yeah, and when we get into the goals and the initiatives, that's where that kind of uh, conversation will, will really come through. Right, thank you. Thank you, Councillor Zavitz. Uh, Councillor Edwards. Actually, it doesn't really matter to me. They're just words. So, uh, you know, you can say what you want, really. But, uh, and that I listen to what the people say and, and uh, try and do it. And that, uh, and that so I don't care how, how you come up with the words. Uh, they're just words on a piece of paper. So, so Councillor, I'm not going to let you off that easily. Um, when you talk to your constituents, where do they see this place going in the next 10, 15, 20 years? Uh, they'd like it to stay uh, basically normal the way it is now without overdevelopment. Uh, we, we've got a fight in uh, Manette right now, uh, and that, that's one of the main things. We've got the official plan. We've got so much that we're working on that, like I say, coming up with, with just some fancy words uh, doesn't do it, it's doing. And yep. that, like I was on construction for 50 years, we didn't talk about it, we did it. Yep, so, okay. But it, but it sounds like your constituents would be interested in protecting the iconic nature of the place. If that's what you say, that's fine with me. Okay, I, I'm a consultant, so I get paid for fancy words. So thank you, Yeah, Council. I know. <laughs> <laughs> and I have a thick skin. Uh, Councillor Mason. It's always fun to follow you, Alan. Thank you. Um, uh, it's probably building on, I think it was uh, Councillor Hayes. I might add something about the quality of life. And I'm not sure if it's here um, okay. or where it fits in. Okay. But, um, you know, our role is to ensure the conditions are set to allow people, the environment, um wildlife things to flourish mm -hmm. and i'm not sure how I, I i don't have those words perhaps but um i do think quality of life is something that uh somehow needs to to fit in okay um so uh, that i think it fits in so it, it depends on I, I think our definition of what we mean by iconic nature so if qu yeah. quality of life is and what we've done with other clients is, you know, there's a lot loaded in words that are in a vision statement. So what we might do um, coming out of this is actually attempt to define some of the terms. Uh, so put little definition statements that uh, supplement the vision statement, because I think there's a lot in that iconic nature piece, right? Yeah, and I think that's maybe, I. I the additional thought I had on that, we talked yesterday um, during the official plan and there was one comment brought up around cultural planning. And yeah. so, you know, we think about natural heritage, we think about um, architectural heritage, some of the, the, the discussion around history and, and, and sense of place here. Um, and so even when I'm looking at iconic nature, I think it, it, it means maybe slightly different things to different people. And um, I think it needs to be looked at as a whole. So I do like the idea here we are defining a word that's within a vision statement. That's something new to me, but um, uh, it's perhaps where I was getting a little bit stuck on. And then when Councillor yeah. Hayes brought up the concept around people, I think it's really important that we are, um, you know, you, we are looking to do things that are ensuring the quality of life for our residents. And uh, I think we have to be very honest about that. Uh, because everybody comes here for different reasons. 85% of the population is coming here for one reason. And then there's uh, a really important 15% of the population that their quality of life um, for, you know, I would almost say there's quality of life and quality of experience uh, mm -hmm. here in the township. And, um, and there's those two things. And I think it's really important that somehow that gets um, included. And again, I'm not sure if it's vision, if it's mission, that's your job to help us figure that out, but. No, and, and I think it's it's giving, you know, you know it's, it's giving you know, some sense of what we mean by some of the words that are in the vision statement, right? Um, right. Yeah, and that's, that's excellent. So thank you very much, uh, Councillor, for that. Uh, Councillor Roberts. Thank you. I don't know why we're wasting our time talking about a vision statement. 
It's foolish, absolutely foolish for our township to have two vision statements. We want one vision statement that encompasses everything. Last, a year ago, we sat in a, in a session with 40, 50, 60 people and talked about a vision statement. We've had vision statements that, uh, at the bottom that we got out of that. We've had vision statements sent to, into us by constituents. We're wasting our time talking about vision statement here because we're only 10 people. Yes, we're the decision makers, but the vision statement must be only one and must come from the community. And that's basically all I'm gonna say on this. No, and, and that's a fair comment. And I just wanna put this in context, right? I mean, we're taking a first crack at it, but we're taking it out to the community uh, for their input. And so they can say, we love it. You guys were bang dead on. This is exactly what the vision is for the community or they may tear it apart. And we'll bring that feedback back to council. Okay. And but we're not, you, you're taking it to the committee. Mer Meridian is taking it out to the committee. We've got to get our act together and talk about a vision statement, one vision statement. You're going to confuse, confuse the hell out of people with multiple vision statements. Yeah, yeah. I mean, so guys, for being so direct, but uh, no, no, I, I appreciate it. I'm from Windsor, so that we, the only language we know is direct. Um, so um, that that's fair, and I think what we're trying to uh, do here through uh, the strategic plan is something that is that is encompasses all the activities and responsibilities of the municipality and. And I know it's confusing and I know people won't necessarily uh, immediately make the distinction, but the official plan only covers, you know, land use planning, basically. Um, we need a vision that talks about how, you know, where we, not only how we see this place growing, uh, but how we see, uh, you know, how we see our services uh, evolving as we, as we move through time, uh, those types of things. So th th that's fair. And uh, I think as the process unfolds, we'll, we'll get there. Um, Councillor uh, Jagowitz. Uh, thank you. While I have my introductory remarks, is it possible for what I would like to put up some words for our vision statement? Is it possible for them to be put on the screen as I dictate them or not? Yeah, please. And we might just need you to uh, slow the pace down a bit just so Lexi can capture it all. Okay. So um, <clears throat> just to, as an introduction to what I'm going to say, first of all, our vision statement should be bold and it should be simple and it should be clear. And keep in mind there's a hierarchy. We have our vision statement, then we have the mission statement, then we have the goals. Yeah. We can't say it all in the vision statement. So, so that's what I want you to follow through with me. So yeah. the first part is correct. The township of Muskoka Lakes will protect and enhance its unique character, comma, natural and cultural environment, and pass it on to future generations, period. That statement didn't just come from me. That came from people that rep represent many of the people in the community. In, in backing up it, I, I know there's, we're missing elements. So I just want to state what I would put in a mission statement, but I don't want it on the screen. Just want to tell you because it, it adds to it, it builds on it. The Township Muskoka Lakes Council, residents and staff will be stewards of the environment set clear expectations of each other and work together to build a sustainable and thriving community. And I think that brings in the economic part and the people uh, part. And then when we get to the goals, we set out the eight or 10 or six goals as to how we achieve that. So I just like to have that up for consideration. Thank you. That's great. And actually, Councilor Jaglowitz, I, th I think what your statement does is it actually does, uh, your, your vision statement actually gets in the people, right? in reference to future generations. Um, so, thank, so thank you for that. Uh, uh, Councillor Bridgman. Okay, thank you. And I, I'm, I'm going to apologize because I am cutting in and out. So I'm missing part of this discussion. Um, I actually really like what Councillor Jaglowitz has put up here. Uh, what I had, and I like the 
inclusion for, um, of, of the people that uh, Councillor Hayes uh, has said. So when I was doing my homework, what I ended up with was uh, the Township of Muskoka Lakes will maintain its iconic nature through balanced environmental stewardship and growth of a year round economy. I would like to see, and, and maybe this isn't the place for it, but I really want to identify a year round economy. And I think the other part, and it may, and I, Councillor Mazdam was cutting in and out on me. Um, I don't know where we put it in our vision, but I think we, we need to uh, address the fact that we have a lot of poverty here and we need to somehow address that. So this is a wonderful place for all of our residents to live. And I'm not sure where that comes in, uh, but that's my other comment. Yeah, so I think the the uh, dealing with the specific matter of poverty is is something councillor I'd like us to discuss and explore through goals and the initiatives discussion. Okay, yep, that that's fine. I just uh, that's great. Okay. Thank you. Uh, and uh, last but certainly not least, councillor Kelly. No, and certainly it won't be least. Um, uh, I uh, all right. I went through this uh, last night. I tried really, really hard working with the uh, draft vision that's here. I was trying hard to see if I could make it any less inspiring uh, or any more insipid, and I failed. Um, I, this is, uh, it, it really is the, the art of, I, I think, a compromise. To me, a vision statement needs to be repeatable. Mem you, know, you have to be able to memorize it, remember it. it. It isn't even a matter of memorizing it. It has to be inspirational. People have to think it, even when they can't speak it. And um, it, so it needs to be short. I'm a big believer in the, uh, as far as vision statements are concerned, in the uh, sort of build it and they will come model. Uh, I, I would like to see this cut right down. First of all, words like maintain and balance to me, uh, we're already sliding away from, from any kind of virtuous, uh, uh, you know, virtuous uh, goal. So I think the, the Township of Muskoka Lakes uh, will preserve its iconic nature by putting the environment first in everything it does, period, full stop. When we get into goals, when we get into initiatives and we start talking about some of those other things, you know, we can draw in all the different elements that need to be pr you know, protected or considered. Uh, we need to start thinking about how we make decisions, how we, you know, who we consult, but not in the vision statement. Keep the vision shape, the statement really punchy, short, motivational, inspirational, um, and absolutely, crystal clear as to its intention and as to its, uh, uh, you know, the, the respect that it needs to, you know, to, you need to afford it. Uh, if you start talking about balancing and maintaining, you've lost me. We'll need a lawyer to interpret it. So that's can my uh, mind, two cents. Do you mind repeating that uh, vision statement you would come up with just so I can get it all on the screen? I can try. We may have to go back to the tape. Uh, the Township of Muskoka Lakes will preserve, instead of maintain, uh, its iconic nature by putting the environment first in everything that it does. Thank you. Okay. Um, so uh, before I kind of sum up where I think, uh, what I think I've heard, um, your worship, I may need your help here. Uh, are there any other follow-up comments that people want to make on any of the vision statements that your colleagues have shared um, or, any, or any comments that particularly resonated with you? Okay, so here's where I think we're landing. Um, I think folks are generally aligned on protecting and enhancing the, the, the township's iconic nature. I think that much we can, uh, we can, we can agree on. And then I, what I sense from uh, across all members of council is that we're protecting and enhancing that iconic nature, which includes environmental stewardship, economic growth, and we gotta bring in our people. So what I would suggest then, what we're trying to achieve here is that the township of Muskoka Lakes will protect and enhance its iconic nature through environmental stewardship and economic growth. And this isn't perfect wordsmithing, uh, we can do that after. Um, 
And I like what uh, the councillor raised in terms of passing it on to future generations. So it, can we work with the concepts of protecting and enhancing the iconic nature, environmental stewardship, economic growth for the purposes of passing it on to future generations? Comments on that. Councillor Jagowitz, I can see your hand that much. I can see. My physical hand or my blue hand? I can see your physical hand. I can't see the blue. I'll use that in the future. Yeah. I, I think you've got, I don't know how economic growth can be in there. You've, you've put the words, but let's say we're making a decision. Which principle are we looking at? That I don't think that's a clear vision statement. And I don't think it, 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 it encapsulates the spirit of uh, Councillor Kelly's. So uh, I think economic growth belongs possibly in the, mis in, the, uh, in the mission statement or the goals, but not in the vision statement. That would be my comment. Okay. Because now you're into the balance again. Okay. Um, uh, other comments? Okay, here's a proposal then. Because uh, I think Councillor Jagowitz, you made a really good uh, uh, contribution. Not that all your contributions aren't excellent, so I'm not saying that. Um, but you know, if, if economic development is part of the mission in terms of how we fulfill the vision, is environmental stewardship more appropriately part of the, the, the mission? And just hear me out on this. And is our vision not really about the township of Muskoka Lakes will protect and enhance its iconic nature to pass it on to future generations. <sighs> Comments? Uh, Councillor, I believe, Bridgman? Thank you. Um, okay, if we can move some of that to the mission statement, I like this. It's clear, it's concise. It doesn't talk about balancing anything. It's um, it, it's memorable. I could memorize this, Peter, and and repeat it very often. So that's my comment. Okay. Uh, other comments? In your worship, I may need your help. I don't see uh, the full screen or or Lexi. If you yeah, can. I don't. Nobody else has their blue hand up. If someone puts their blue hand up, I can uh, work our way through that. Sorry, I, I thought you made everybody uh, color their hand blue. Uh, it's, it's an interesting. Sorry, there's, there's a little window, Chris, if, at the bottom of the Zoom screen for called participants. If you click that window, you should see the list of people. And if they raise their hand, so I just raised my hand, you should see a little blue hand go up. Yeah, um, and I, I don't want Councillor Jaglowitz to pull a muscle, so he has his hands. He has a hand hands up. Okay. I know Councillor Hayes is also in the queue. Okay, perfect. So am I on? Yes, you are. I think there's a problem there. You've got uh, iconic nature. I don't think that was, was it nature? I don't know what that means. Yeah, in, in the current draft statement from our uh, January work, uh, Councillor, it's uh, uh, maintaining its iconic nature. So it's nature. And I believe it's a broad definition of nature. So that can be cultural nature, environmental nature, economic nature, those types of things. Okay, I guess... Okay, okay, I'll, for simplicity, that will then be expanded in the, in the mission. Is that what you're suggesting? Yeah, because yeah. you made a great point, right? So the mission tells, the mission is all about how do we act on a day-to-day -day basis to deliver on our vision, right? But will, will the public, when they repeat this and the staff, will they understand what iconic nature means? I guess that, I'm just, I'm, I'm not arguing with what you've done, yeah. I'm just. So what, what I'm. If everybody knows what it means, that's fine. So there, there's two schools of thought on this. One is what we're going to do as part of our homework coming out of this is actually um, we're going to we're going to provide a bit of a definition to what is meant by iconic nature, um, and it's not in the vision statement. But if anybody says iconic nature, what do you mean by that? Right. Well, we actually mean our tradition, culture, ec economy, environment. You know, uh, more broadly. Um, or you know, there are, there are some people who say you know. Uh, you know, sometimes a good vision statement is people can read in to that vision statement what, they, what, what is meaningful to them. Uh, but I think if we try to put some definition around what we mean by iconic nature, um, I think that can help clarify things. But it's certainly simple. 
And it's certainly, but, it, but it's missing the key word environment. That that's my that's my that's my my comment. It, yeah. It, it conic nature could be that we have a lot of, uh, you know, auto repair shops. I, I I don't know. So anyway, that was just my comment. I, I I think the word environment or something like that should be in there. But other than that, I I've said enough. Thank you. Yeah, Chris, uh, Councillor Hayes in the queue, and then Councillor Roberts. Thank you, Your Worship. Okay, I, I think that the statement that you have there is a great vision statement for the Torrance Barrens. It, it sounds like you're defining a park. Um, I don't think that that definition of a vision statement is going to come across. And I don't believe a vision statement should be left to interpretation. I believe a vision statement should tell you exactly what you're looking for. It should mm -hmm. lead you, not let you imagine what it could be for your own enhancement. And I think that it should deal with um, the physicality of your home, that it's the environment. I think that it should include uh, jobs, which is the economy. And I think that it should um, improve the lives of people, the quality of lives of people. And I think those three things should be included in the vision statement and it should be clear and concise. Okay, thank you. Councillor Roberts. Okay, I, I agree with uh, Councillor Hayes. And I think it should be what Councillor Hayes has said, uh, be, met, it be blended with what uh, Councillor, um, oh, sorry, I was gonna have a great day. Um, Kelly, Councillor Kelly. And in no way I support the um, iconic nature. It's just too, too vague and is left to interpretation. Excellent. Okay. Uh, are there other uh, hands up, Your Worship? Uh, right now, that uh, clears the hands. Um, okay. And so why don't we try this then, on for size? Because I, I I do think that you know so you know the vision can't be taken in isolation. Though I know it 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 it, it oftentimes is the elevator pitch. So I, I fully appreciate that. But to build on Councillor Jagelwitz's point there. The, the, the how we do the achieving of the vision is in the mission. But let me try this. What if we said the township of Muskoka Lakes will um, protect and enhance its iconic environment and quality of life and pass it on to future generations? Um, is it iconic environment or an iconic character? I, I, again, everything's open to interpretation. We're going to have to interpret it anything else because yep. what makes us iconic? But I, um, well, I, I think I think what makes you iconic. I think there are a few things that make you iconic, and I think the emphasis is different across different counselors. Um, what I think, what I'm trying to um, encourage folks to do is to say, we are iconic, we can all agree on we're iconic, and let's define in our mission the things that we're going to focus on to preserve that iconic environment, nature, character. And in the mission, it is the things we're going to do around environmental stewardship about developing a year-round economy, about um, uh, delivering services to people. Okay, we've got a few hands in the queue. Councillor Hayes, then Roberts, then Kelly, then Nishikawa, then Jagowitz. Okay. Councillor? Was the Councillor Hayes first, Your Worship? Sorry. Yeah, sure. Her hand came down. It might have been up before. Councillor Kelly, Nishikawa, and then Jagwe. Yeah. Uh, my only comment was uh, that would be handy if we ever decided to run in another jurisdiction. We could take TML out and change it with Mississauga or Streetsville or Oakville because it really doesn't speak to Muskoka. The, 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 is that in specific reference to the term character, Councillor? The, 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 uh, 
I'm reading the red at the bottom. Is that what yeah. we're talking about? Yeah. It just went up. Yeah. I don't see character in there, but uh, well, you're, um, the, the, I, the, I mean, this, this is just, um, you know, apple pie and motherhood. Uh, everybody wants to protect the environment and uh, pass it on to future generations. I'm not sure that this is in any way kind of inspiring, motivational or profound. It's uh, it sounds like uh, Wikipedia for any town you Google. Okay. Okay, Councillor Nishikawa. Thank you. Um, I think I'm struggling with what is being put out here because probably I've done this too many times and it's it's just shocking to me how much time we're spending on on a few words when we could look back at other vision statements and find even in the past rocks trees and whatever you know it it, it, it I I don't think we're iconic at all that just replaces unique as far as I'm concerned um, and I don't, I don't see that this is Muskoka, um, but again, I would suggest folks just look back at past vision statements and, uh, and their missions and things. And it pretty much says very clearly, exactly, nothing's changed. We're, we're still not having a year on economy. We still have winter, that's the big challenge. And, I, I just don't know how we got to this point where we're spending so much time on a few of these words when in fact we've struggled with these words for years and then come up with a statement and, and essentially we're still gonna be saying the same thing. Okay, thank you. I, I guess Councillor Kelly and then, uh, or, and then Councillor Jaglitz. No, I've already gone. Okay, I'll get you to lower your hand. Thank you, Councillor Jagowitz. Uh, thank you. I, I I think that I have trouble just the word iconic to me is maybe it's that I didn't uh, go far enough in university to understand what it means. I think the one in bold that I suggested uh, is clear to understand. And if you shortened down and took out Councillor Muskoka Lakes and put TML in front of it, you'd probably, I mean, I'm not that you're going to, it'd be almost as short. So I still favor that one. I think it's clearer. Thank you. Chris, can I just uh, ask a question or maybe, uh, yeah. maybe where we want to go? Because again, we seem to be going around in circles and adding words and everything. Um, I, I wonder as an exercise, I think we did this the first time where we put down each individual counselor, what we felt Muskoka was, what differentiated us. And I, I where Councillor Kelly, how are we different than Mississauga or Oakville or wherever? Yeah. So, um, you know, maybe as, as homework coming back, we might have to park this for a second today, but um, what makes Muskoka unique? And, uh, and I've said this before, I mean, th there are certain differentiators with Muskoka or Muskoka Lakes in particular, that is not Kawartha's or not Point of Barrel or Algonquin Park. And um, those are some of the things I think of why people want to be here and um, as we look at our vision, I think we maybe need to enhance some of those and, and truly um, preserve many of those things. And that includes great water quality um, and, and everything that we've talked about. But I think we'd really need to kind of identify that because I'm not sure we're all, we're all struggling with what it is that makes Muskoka, Muskoka. That is fair. Um... What about the proposition put on the on the um, on the table by Councillor Jagowitz? His statement. So, Lexi, if you can highlight it, I want to go through kind of one by one. Councillor Kelly, does this capture what you see as the future of the town? Uh, I think that it does. I still think it's too long. I still think it's got, you know, yep. uh, word salad in the middle there. Um, but uh, it certainly captures the notion that what we have here 
people aspire to. People want to be here. They pay a supreme pe uh, premium for the inconvenience of septic tanks and pumping water out of a lake. Um, and we need to preserve and maintain that. And that means we got to protect it. And that means, contrary to what I heard earlier, we need to display a little more courage around making tough decisions um, to preserve it. Uh, but uh, so, but I, I still think that this is the vision statement. This isn't the roadmap. This is just the, this is the uh, aerial photography about what we want and how we think this place should look and may either stay the same or, or what it should morph into. And it needs to be inspirational. It needs to be easy to memorize and repeat. Um, and it needs to speak to what this place really represents and not be as ubiquitous as something that could be applied anywhere else. So I think this is pretty good. I just think there's a, a little too much in the middle. We Protect can, and enhance, you know. But, anyhow, it's, I'll start. but it, it's sentiment in the aspirational nature of it. It's, it's, it's better than... Um, I, I think this is pretty good. I just, I just don't think anybody's going to remember this and be able to repeat it. Okay, well, we can work on that. Yeah. Uh, Councillor Bridgman? Um, yes, no, I would support this. I, I think it goes a long way to what we're trying to do. Protect and enhance says to me that we're, we are going to be strong on this moving forward and, um, and uh, do more than protect. So I would, uh, I'd be happy with this. Okay. Uh, Councillor Jaglowitz, I'm, I'm assuming you support your own uh, wording. At the moment. <laughs> Councillor Roberts. Okay. These words are okay. I just want to listen to what uh, Councillor Nishikawa has and Councillor Hayes because I think we're missing something. We're talking about protecting and enhancing the unique character. Um, <laughs> our unique character. Um, is it, I don't know. Is our unique character that we are? We are um, lead, leader or, or not number two in poverty in the province of Ontario. So I'll just wait to see what Councillor Hayes and Mishikawa have. Okay. Uh, thank you. Councillor Mason. Uh, thank you. And it's probably building a bit on what Councillor Roberts was just saying. Um, I do like this. I'm trying to play it out in my head and 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 it needs to be um, capturing <laughs> the essence of everything that we're talking about. Yep. But um, the one piece I continue to come back to is the ensuring quality of life for all of our residents. And again, if it's in here or if it's in our mission statement, I just feel like it it um, it's not being reflected somehow. Yep. And I'm, I don't have the answer necessarily. Uh, it's hard in this format because if we were sitting around in a room and we could be writing things down together, it might be a bit different, but. Yeah, I, I might have a solution for you, Councillor. I'll, I'll share yeah. it, I'll, I'll share it. Thank you, thank you. Um, Councillor Edwards. Uh, yeah, you can say whatever you want in, in, in the vision statement because, you know, actually, I'll, and I, I'll, I'll be honest with you, the, the District of Muskoka will, will have their vision. The provincial policy statement will have their vision. So mm -hmm. it's not our vision, it's what the province wants. So we can say however we want on these words. If the province wants a gravel pit, they'll shove it down our throat. So there goes your environment, there goes everything else. So. Like I say, we've spent uh, an hour and a half on this. Uh, like I say, you could basically you say whatever words you want, but uh, we're not our own masters, unfortunately. Thanks, Councillor. Councillor Zavitz. Thank you. So I, I certainly know what my Muskoka is, and I, I'm clear, very clear in that vision. And I, I, I don't understand why there is confusion, whether we use the word quintessential or iconic. Uh, they were just words. It's how we back it up. Again, measurement. So I, I'm prepared to move on. Uh, the highlighted piece is fine. Uh, I think we should uh, agree to a, a disagree and move on. Thank you. Okay, thanks, Councillor. Uh, Councillor Hayes.
Um, yeah, I would like to add while respecting our diverse population, but I believe that the statement should be shorter and not longer. So I don't, I don't know how you're gonna get all of it in there. So okay. yeah, I could live with what you've got here. If like, I agree with Councillor Edwards, um, it, it's a matter of what we do, not what we write down on a curve. Okay. Uh, Councillor uh, Nishikawa. Thank you. Um, you know, essentially I, I want to move on. Um, for me, just because Gord asked, what is Muskoka? Well, it's rugged, it's clean, it's healthy. It, it's all of those things that people aren't getting elsewhere, essentially, um, is why I believe that people gravitate here. And certainly we've seen that over the last uh, six months. Um, but I don't see that we're gonna get that, that, that message in, in this vision and I just wanna move on. Okay, thank you. Uh, your Worship. Um, I'm, I'm circling back to just words and uh, where we've been before, because I, I just pulled something up online that says, um, our vision is to respect, maintain and enhance Muskoka, which is a diverse community where generations interact with nature, recreation, history, and tourism. These unique attributes combine to make Muskoka an iconic choice to visit, live, and work, which just happens to be our current vision right now, which I think is everything everyone's saying. And then the mission that says we want to recognize uh, and respect the diversity of our residents and, the, and economy openly engaging the public to achieve our vision with balance, transparency, sustainability, accountability. I, the only thing that's missing in those is a, a little greater emphasis on the environment. So I, I, I'm, I'm gonna look to you, Chris, where you wanna go from here. Um, but I think we've had it a lot. Yeah, no, that's, that's fair. Um, so here's, here's, where I, here's where I think we've landed. And, and Councillor Jag Lewitz, I want to propose a friendly amendment to your words. There's, there's a couple of questions. Uh, Councillor Edwards and Kelly have their, their hands up. Just okay, perfect. Councillor Edwards. Yes. Um, you know something? That other one is pretty good. And I think I just leave it the way it is and uh, save yourself some more uh, time. And that there's nothing wrong with it. <laughs> Councillor Kelly. I was just going to point out that uh, as a vision statement, it, it uh, it's interesting that we've gotten this far in the process before anybody remembered we had it. So, uh, <laughs> you know what I mean? Like if it was really good, that would be top of mind. It would be uh, uh, printed on the side of every one of our vehicles. It, it was, it, it's awful long. Okay. So, so here's what I'm going to propose. Because I think we're close to victory, believe it or not. Um, Councillor Jagowitz, here's how we propose to just slightly rephrase your statement. The Township of Muskoka Lakes will protect and enhance its unique natural, cultural, uh, sorry, yeah, so it, it uh, will enhance its uh, unique uh, natural and cultural character to pass it on to future generations, roughly. There's, I get the sense there's general agreement on the sentiment. I'm just, uh, so what do we mean? Uh, I see Councillor Everts and Kelly's hands are up, but I think they've been up from before. So, okay. so Councillor Jagowitz, is that agreeable? Uh, uh, do you think there deserves a comma out of unique or not? Uh, yeah, uh, no, I, I don't think it does because I think what we're saying, what is unique about the place is its natural and cultural character. Uh, but but that means it's unique natural character. You see what I mean? Whereas the other one said unique character, or natural and cultural environment. I mm -hmm. see. So now we've missed the word environment's not there. Okay, so. Uh, or is it, I, I think, 
you know, I think it's hard to improve on what was there. Okay. I really do. And I, and I, I actually respect all the other people's comments. I, I don't think we're going to ever get this right. I think it should be short. It's as short as it can be. I think we have to flush it out in the next parts. And I almost agree with uh, uh, the Councillor Edwards uh, and Roberts. You know, we're spending too much time on this. Let's move on. Okay. Um, so, um, so w w let's let's stick with the the wording as proposed by Councillor uh, Jaglowitz to to move forward. So, so well, listen. I actually, I, I, I'm going to suggest people liked what you just wrote. That okay. new one, and j just a quick question of clarity, because it's not unique, natural, and cultural character. What's the difference between natural character and environmental character? Are they not? I, I think of nature in natural. So that's why I'm not sure that like that is more succinct in my opinion. Like I I I like that statement. Mayor Harding, I I I'm happy to leave it up to the professionals to 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 change the words around a bit to to, to meet both of us. Uh, I, I don't think we have to go back and forth. I think okay. we both agree this is the concept, right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, let's yeah. declare victory on that. And all I would say is, you know, I get the sense that some people are frustrated by this discussion, but you know. These aren't hard. These are, these aren't easy conversations, right? And um, you know, if we can't agree on the big things, it's going to be awfully difficult to agree on the small things. And it's not saying everybody's 100% in violent agreement, but if we're 75% there, it's going to make uh, the working together on the rest of it, and then actually actioning it a whole lot easier. So I think we made a we made a ton of progress with with that statement. Um, so your worship, I know we're coming up uh, against the 11 o'clock. So we can uh, proceed in one of two ways. One is we can call it here and let's pick up the mission statement as the first agenda item on Tuesday. Um, and we'll, we'll turn around what we agreed to today so everybody has that in advance and we can validate this and then finish off the mission statement and work on the goals. Uh, or we can spend a little extra time. I, I, I would respectfully submit that the uh, uh, former is probably the best way to go. I, I just get the sense that people um, maybe a little intellectually exhausted at this point. Um, I, I don't disagree with you. Um, honestly, I, I don't have an issue with the mission specifically as you've drafted it, but uh, maybe somebody does just maybe some comments that we could okay. that, that's great. Yeah, that'd be we'll get out of here in five, 10 minutes. Okay. So it, should I just go, uh, if it's okay, then I'll, I'll go through, I think uh, now we're bottom to top again, uh, not, not, not that you're not first in our hearts, Councillor Kelly, but um, Councillor Kelly, can you kick us off on, on the, the draft uh, mission statement? Uh, I have to admit, I lost track of what the hell we were talking about there. So where are we? We're looking at the mission statement? Yeah. We start at the slide, bottom of work for the- Slide 26, yep. All right, hang on, let me just get my pages here. Um, I made notes. <laughs> Can't read them. You know what? I'm uh, I'm out. Uh, this is just words. I'll go with Alan Edwards' approach. <laughs> I don't have any comment at this point. I'm tapping out. Got it. Read that, yeah. Council Bridgman. Um, I know you'd like to carry on, but I, I'm just about tapped out too, and it doesn't mean that I don't want to work on this. Um but the last two hours have been really intense. So uh, I guess my comment would be, and you you need to help me on this, where do we talk about um, all of our community being vibrant and resilient and successful in terms of, of um, everybody? Chris, I'm, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna help here, I think a little bit and uh, realizing this may take, well, I was hoping that the mission might be a little bit simpler but I think it is going to be more in depth and I think to respect uh, council's perspective, but uh, maybe we should tap out on the whole concept of this. Okay, so we'll make it the first agenda item on- Could I, could I, ju could I just, just before we leave, could I just make one comment and then it might help us when we come back or, or am I out of order? Chris, okay. I'll leave that to you. And I know Councillor Everts has a question as well. Or do you want to save it till next time? I was just gonna uh, recommend one small amendment to it. And, and it might just help everyone. And that would be to replace the word R before community with the words, a sustainable and thriving. 
And I think it adds a lot to it. In other words, it would then read to build a sustainable and thriving community. So okay. Councilor Evans, that's my comment. comment. We're gonna circle back on this on Monday or Tuesday. Uh, yeah, um, you were talking about the mission statement. I can't see how, how that works. Uh, secure expectations for each other. And that we've been talking for two hours to try and get clear expectations. So uh, I don't think that works for a mission statement in, in my view. Thank you. Okay. So again, uh, Councilor Mazan, do you have a comment? And we're going to, we're going to deal with the mission on Monday or Tuesday, I guess it is. Yes. Councilor Mazan, anything to add or like not really specific to the mission or just overall comment? Um, just an overall comment. And I, I think it will be helpful when we come back again on uh, Monday or Tuesday is just uh, as we see the updated um, values and then the drafted vision statement, the one thing that I continue to see maybe that I'm struggling with is just ensuring that uh, that whole quality of life. And again, I keep um, talking about that piece as well. So uh, as we look to next week, I, I just would love to understand how that's uh, gets weaved into this. Thank you. Okay, Chris, do you have any final comments? Before nope. I... Other than to say, Your Worship, uh, well, uh, people are tired and, and it's a Friday. Um, we actually did make a lot of progress this morning. So um, kudos to everybody and uh, look forward to the conversation on Tuesday. Okay, thank you. And I, just, I want to thank again yourself, Chris. Obviously, uh, as you realize, we work our way through our council. Uh, many different opinions as to moving this forward. And uh, from council's perspective, hopefully we can find some consensus and we can refer back to this and staff can refer back to this going forward um, so that we're not sending in 10 directions on every single topic. So uh, I appreciate the work of what you're doing and everyone else. Um, and just one last thing, Your Worship, uh, yeah. just in terms of uh, the next workshop on Tuesday, there will be another workbook that uh, will be sent out uh, with some additional homework. Um, and uh, we will also be writing up and uh, sharing uh, the feedback from this session in advance of Tuesday as well. So we will we'll review that, we'll, uh, we'll uh, take care of the mission and get into the goals. Okay, thank you. Um, okay, I think we are probably good then. So I have a resolution moved by Councillor Mazan, seconded by Councillor Roberts. Be it resolved that the committee of the whole meeting adjourn at 11 a.m. Um, can we stop screen sharing just so there we go. So now we can see everybody voting. Thank you very much. Uh, all those in favor? I think we've got everybody there. Yep. Okay, thank you. Uh, and uh, council, uh, I think we're back on at two o'clock uh, for our strategic plan for a quick resolution to move that forward. So that should not, hmm? Official plan, sorry. Uh, we're on strategic plan now. So we'll see you at two o'clock and it shouldn't take us long uh, at two. So see you all in a few hours. And thanks. Uh, Phil, I'm not available. I've got a uh, hall.